Hello everyone. I wish you a good day, a good afternoon, and a good evening. Welcome to the Spam Virtual Debates 2021 Tournament Room 15. Our host in this session is Elder Lutri, who will be managing the technical aspects of our match. Let's meet our judges. Judge Phyllis Redhair has an education in emergency management and homeland security, broad interest in relief, rebuilding efforts, including emergency planning, preparedness, and mitigation for natural and man-made disasters, and earth science. She's a member of the Arizona chapter of the National Space Society. Judge Big Nashala was a high school policy debater from Dead Brook South in LL in the USA from 2012 to 2016. He qualified for three national championships tournament, TOZ, NSAA, and NFL his senior year. Welcome to the debate, judges. Judges, please remain in the Zoom room at the end of the debate for reporting purposes. And I'm the moderator and facilitator for Room 15, and my name is Sharon Peralta. I would like to read the following statement to you. The winning team is chosen based on their skill and effort not on any preset National Space Society position. National Space Society clearly believes that humanity should continue to explore, develop, and settle space. However, National Space Society also believes that open, honest debate will facilitate that goal. It is important that space advocates understand and be able to express the anti-space case. No statement by any debater or coach is an official position of National Space Society. Okay, so now let's meet our debaters. The first is Team Satish Dawan, which is named for a spaceport in India. Team Satish Dawan, please give us your name and the country you are representing. Hey everyone, my name is Tapas Banerjee and I'm from India. Hello everyone, my name is Sani and I'm from China. Hello everyone, my name is Stephanie Caceres and I'm from Peru. Hello, my name is Eduardo and I'm from Romania. Thank you. Next, Team Alcantara, name for the spaceport located in Brazil. Team Alcantara, please give us your name and the country you are representing. Hello, everybody. My name is Andre, and I'm from Romania, and I want to wish everyone good luck and have fun in this debate. Hello, my name is Maria, and today I'm also from Romania. Hello, my name is Daniela, and I'm from Peru. Thank you. If anyone has a question, please raise your hand in your participant's icon on your screen. Please mute your mic unless you are speaking, and only the presenting team and judges should turn on their videos unless directed by the moderator. Our debating format today follows the same format as on June 11, 2021. All right, Mr. Delutri, do we have only the judges and affirmative team with live videos and mics? Uh, just a moment, let's see. Yes, we do now. Okay, thank you. So let's get started. We'll hear from the first speaker from Team Satish Dawan representing the affirmative position for the resolution, a space traffic management should be regulated by the United Nations Security Council. Team Satish Dawan, your first speaker may begin your affirmative intro. You have three minutes. Please start. Hello everyone. My name is Tapas Banji and as speaker one for Satish Dawan, I will be introducing all of you to the arguments that our team would be debating upon. Space traffic management is defined by the International Academy of Astronautics, IAA, as the set of technical and regulatory provisions for promoting safe access into outer space, operations in outer space, and return from outer space to Earth, free from physical or radio frequency interference. The need for space traffic management is growing at a phenomenal rate in recent times. Space exploration will be governed by the efficiency of space traffic management today. The laws we set forward today will not be a gradual engineering of existing space laws, but a big bang, as in the law of the sea, which includes the transfer of all the current legal provisions, treaties, and regulations into one coherent and comprehensive text. The United Nations Security Council is an important organization to maintain international peace and security. It should ensure order inside and outside the Earth. As we all know, development cannot proceed without order. With the development of the space industry, there are more and more space vehicles in outer space. There must be a firm rule recognized by all to ensure the traffic order of space. The UNSC comprises several powerful countries whose capabilities are recognized worldwide. Our team believes the best option for space management is for the UNSC to set the rules. 
keeping the principle of universalization in mind to promote universal cooperation, it is a must that the enrollment of UNSC shall not be in the last stages of our space journey, but the beginning of our journey into space. However, this should not mean that existing space entities like SpaceX or Blue Origin should be given the privilege to create a monopoly over this area. To back my statements, I would also like to provide an example from the recent past. Last decade, a single miscalculation by Elon Musk's rocket company fired the satellite into the wrong orbit, which created problems and havoc for the maintenance of satellites in the low Earth orbit, such that they had to maneuver slightly in order to escape a tragic crash. Annie will be speaking about the issue of space debris and how UNSC can combat. Stephanie will be speaking about the power of the United Nations Security Council to restore peace between member nations. Eddie will be providing the summary of our team's arguments. Finally, we state aside again, space traffic management should be regulated by the UNSC. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, speaker negative one from team Akantara, please give your three minutes intro. Start, please. Okay, thanks. <clears throat> Respected jury and my fellow mates, very good morning, afternoon, evening to one and all present here. My name is Daniela and I will be the first speaker from Team Alantara. The second speaker, Andre, will present to you an argument about the disadvantages the UN Security Council brings and why we strongly believe they should not be responsible for the regulations of space traffic management. After that, Maria will talk about the project alternative and showing why it is more respectful and better than the UN Security Council, thus achieving universalization. In then Andrew will summarize the debate, make the final statements, and conclude why we think the UN Security Council should definitely not regulate space traffic management, being in contradiction with universalization. As you probably already know, according to Andrew J. Dilk in Journal of Air Law and Commerce, space traffic is currently managed and regulated by the Federal Aviation Administration. The definition given by the International Academy of Astronautics to STM is STM is a set of technical and regulatory provisions for promoting safe access into outer space, operations in outer space, and return from outer space to Earth, free from physical or radio frequency interference. The most important aspects of space traffic are the launch of specific vehicles, the orbits of satellites, and the most important one, space debris. Besides that, space traffic management also refers to the purposes of the space missions, and if they are critical or not, as they could represent malicious plans. According to the UN.org, the United Nations Security Council tasks are international peace, security maintenance, human rights protection, sustainable development support, and climate action. Thus, we understand the resolution as the UN Security Council, who is responsible with international peace, security security maintenance, human rights protection, the sustainable development and climate action should regulate safe access and operations in the, the outer space, the launches of space vehicles, the orbits of satellites, space debris, and investigate the role of each mission. So at the end from the given resolution, we understand that the whole concept of space traffic management so, should be fully controlled by the UN Security Council. So for our team's arguments, in a negative role, we will demonstrate to you why the UN Security Council shouldn't definitely regulate space traffic management. Next, after the, the affirmative team gives their arguments, Andre will present you the first argument. Thank you. Thank you. Let's hear from affirmative two from Team Satis the One for your beginning three minutes arguments. Please start. Further extending to the points stated by speaker one, I would like to focus upon an issue that is often discussed today, technology. We all know that 15 members of the UNSC, five of which are permanent members, China, the United States, France, the United Kingdom, and Russia, are very powerful countries. In the past century, the scientific and technological level of all these countries has been the leading position in the world. For example, so far, six countries have implemented lunar exploration, and a large part of them belongs to the UNSC. Nowadays, in the process of space exploration, if we want a deeper and more successful results, it is impossible to rely on one country alone, let alone the technological level of most countries is not, not enough to support their exploration in the universe. At this time, 
the UN Security Council can take on the responsibility of providing scientific and technological assistance to the whole world and leading us to prosperity. Space debris is an immense issue and space exploration will become non-sustainable in the future if we don't do anything today regarding solving the debris crisis. In the lowest orbit or LDO, there are about 900,000 objects and more than 4% of those are bigger than one centimeters, which at the right velocity could destroy a rocket. For example, at the end of December 1991, a Russian satellite Cosmos 1394 crashed into a large fragment released by Cosmos 926, another satellite in Russia. The former produced two traceable fragments, while the latter discreened it into smaller ones that could not be tracked. The permanent nations of the UNSC with uh, effective space programs account for more than 80% of debris, which is a staggering number considering the fact that other nations with backward technologies cannot even do anything of it, which raises the question again on the efficiency of managed and space traffic. Therefore, we reaffirm that the UNSC is the organization that has the power to resolve uh, the issue of space debris management. And with its five permanent members are great powers involved with the issue we are dealing with. So they can motivate more countries to join in and be part of a great change for a better future for all. Creating a secure and evolving environment beyond Earth is a very important thing if we want to achieve greater knowledge about the unknown that surrounds our planet. Thank you. Thank you. We have a one minute talent break at this time. We continue. Negative two from Team Alcantara, please give your beginning arguments and respond to affirmative two in your six minutes allotment. Start, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Borgo Mambuko Andre, and today I'm going to be the second speaker of Team Alcantara. I will tell you the first argument about why we think that US Security Council shouldn't definitely regulate space traffic management and then make a rebuttal of the affirmative team's arguments. So, as Daniela has already presented in the first speech, the United Nations deal with businesses in multiple subjects, not just space. According to UN.org, their tasks also include rights protection and climate action. Is regulating space traffic management something that has a considerable effect on climate? No, it isn't. I know astronauts are also humans and that they have rights, but space traffic management requires more than that. Yes, it has to do with peace and security maintenance between countries that participate in space projects, but it has nothing to do with space vehicle outages, satellite orbits, and space debris, the main characteristics of STM. This is why the UN Security Council is not capable of regulating space traffic management, something that, something that goes against the whole concept of universalization, since it is disrespectful and unprofessional to let someone do a job for which they're not certified. According to, the, to an article published on UN.org, and just listen carefully to this, Lebanon deviates from UN regulations. That game is accurate, and a brief look at Lebanon offers some proof. It continues to violate Security Council's resolutions year after year, but no one ever complains, and no one ever argues that Lebanon must be punished with boycotts or prosecutions for doing so. The proof for this is given by the calls upon the government of Lebanon to fully extend and exercise its sole and effective authority through the South, including through the deployment of sufficient numbers of Lebanese armed and security forces to ensure a calm environment throughout the area, which does not happen. On the other side, the Federal Aviation Administration, which Daniela defined, 
defines those two neglect regulations. According to the US Department of Transportation's Federal Aviation Administration, the FAA proposes a $27,000 civil penalty against an airline passenger for all jail interfering with a flight attendant. This is why we strongly believe that the FAA can regulate STM way better than the U.S. Security Council. According to SCCompeter.com, the Federal Aviation Act from 1958 empowered the Federal Aviation Administration to manage the space traffic. I'm not saying that they did bad, but there's someone who can do better. This is the United Nations Office for Outer Space, UNOSA. It facilitates peaceful international cooperation in outer space. It was made in order to assist the Committee on the Peaceful Uses of Outer Space. Copus. Since 1958, it has launched over 11,000 satellites in space, which can be found if we simply Google it on the first link, so it has already experienced in the space domain. UNOSA already has seven guidelines for removing space debris since 2010. They have made meetings each year in order to discuss these things, so they need to take the place of the FAA, which now regulates STM, in order to put into practice what they planned. And besides that, they have 95 permanent country members, so way more than the UN Security Council. According to UNOSA.org, it already has laws regarding STM, so it should fully regulate it. Now, if you remember, I strongly mentioned with existing evidence that the UN Security Council also deals with climate action, which is the biggest problem here on Earth. Hint, it has to do with Earth's life, the most important thing for us humanity, and not only. Yes, you had it right. It's global warming, which is also an action of the climate, which is changing. Now, if the UN Security Council, according to the United Nations.org, is, is also responsible for climate action, why shouldn't we let them simply do their job? According to the United Nations Framework Convention on Climate Change, the United Nations Security Council have already invested over $80 billion in renewable energy. What is the purpose of letting them regulate STM if they have more important things to do here on Earth? Global warming, global pollution, these are real things that also need to be regulated and taken care of, since our planet is already dying. How can we further launch rockets or create space missions if the Earth is dying? I'm not saying to leave spurt exploration and STM behind, but let the ones that are specified on climate action do their job, and the ones on space traffic, like the FAA, UNOSA, and the other aspect we're going to clarify soon, theirs. That's one of the arguments why we strongly believe that the UN Security Council shouldn't regulate STM. Now, for the rebuttal on the affirmative team's arguments. You have talked about the members that are in the UN Security Council. There are 10 uh, members who change once two years and five permanent members. And you said that they achieved universalizations because those five members are the countries which have developed the best space policies. Okay, you're right. But what about UNOSA? It has 95 permanent countries, including those five. So it has more, uh, even more power. Uh, wouldn't it be better to have the STM regulated by UNOSA since it has more countries? Besides that, has the UN Security Council developed a space policy? You talked about space debris and that it is a problem, but how can the UN Security Council, uh, Council solve it? You haven't said any proof that it can actually do something. The UN Security Council hasn't demonstrated that it is capable of uh, cleaning the space. Uh, besides that, you said that uh, it encourages universalization, uh, but how do you know that? For example, the Federal Aviation Administration is the biggest and the largest modern transportation agency with powers to regulate all aspects of civil aviation. Isn't this more justified than the UN Security Council? What I'm trying to say is that the UN Security Council shouldn't definitely regulate space traffic management, then the FAA is way better, and then UNOSA is the best. What is the solution of all the problems you just said? To let the UN Security Council uh, manage those? I don't think so. Next, Moriah will tell you the second case uh, after the affirmative team's response and the cross -ex. Thank you. Thank you. We have a one minute silent break at this time.
We continue. Affirmative two of Satishda one now returns for a three minute response to negative two. Start, please. Thank you from uh, negative two. So now I'm going to give my rebuttals to you. So firstly, you said something about the UNSC have, uh, UNSC having something more important to do other than STM. Of course, the UNSC is a powerful organization that could handle almost you know, everything about security that is on Earth. And a strong central authority is necessary because like a long time ago, even before a country was formed, people tried to let everyone in power and it's, it's like in a UNOSA, but often the result was constant wars. Only when there is a leader to lead us, there can be a peaceful situation. Therefore, as the strongest existing authority in the world, the UNSC can fully shoulder this responsibility. And as for the chaos, in the UN Security Council, the five permanent members do have great rights, but it is this precisely reason that they can restrict each other and ensure the internal unity of the EU, UN Security Council. And what is the purpose of the UN Security Council? It is to ensure world security and peace. And in the past, they have proven themselves many times and any, any worse. Therefore, in the future of STM, we firmly believe that it will exercise its responsibility again. And also, the permanent nations of the UNSC, which uh, it has an effective space program. As I said earlier, they handle more than 80% of sp space debris problems. And at the present level of the science and technology, there is no other organization in the world to manage STM except UNSC. And FAA is all, also only made up by one country, the USA. Do you really think that could benefit universalization and means to bring us together? Not like you letting one country is taking all fully control. And even if we create a new organization or give the UNOSA power, many countries will be even more vulnerable. Strong countries would overpower the weak. It is too ideal to assume that they won't. And in our suggestion, there's no other way any country will get power. So the UNSC definitely should take it. And also, if there are too many countries participating, how do they reach an agreement that benefits equally? That is practically impossible. And several countries do not have the slightest bit of we, what we are doing now. So the UNSC is the power, uh, is the central of the power. And all those countries, they have the science, they have the technology, and they can do like everything that we need to ensure the STM. Thank you. Thank you. Let's now hear affirmative one and two and negative one and two in a four minute cross examination. That is the one, we'll begin the cross examination. Start please. Yeah, so Andre from the Malcantara mentioned that Kinosa has more power just because it has a higher number of countries in its organization. But the thing is UNSC, the Security Council is the most powerful organization on the planet because it has say over the weapons of mass destruction and the use of nuclear weapons. How does the negative team propose preventing weapons of mass destruction from being launched into outer space, potentially triggering a third world war? Okay, I would like to answer that question. Well, you said that the Security Council is the biggest or the most important thing on Earth or something like that. I haven't got that right. Okay, is that right? Okay. Yeah on earth you just said that not in space and besides that i want to ask you one question and i would like daniela to ask you that question if you agree so daniela please yes okay so please can you uh, tell me uh, you say that 80 percent of the space debris uh, has problems right yes yes so you're saying that 80% of space debris is taken care of by the UN Security Council? There is a space program. Okay, so if that happens, why did one week ago on 2nd June 2021, space debris hit the International Space Station and destroy its robotic arm? This is a real problem. If the UN Security Council manages that, then it is not the good organization to do that since one week ago. And I can give you more examples if you want. For example, 2009, when two satellites collided. What do you think about that? Shouldn't okay. then so the basically it can still be changed? Mm -hmm. So we I think you are, uh, you're, oh, okay. So it's like, basically you are like mixing up disasters and how we solve them. 
the U.S. Security Council, sure, it should regulate. So it means, what is regulation? It means it could take care before it happens and manage what will the, the causes and they it will take care of it. So it's like you ask, like we are humans, like um, you are asking a king why an earthquake happens. We cannot control all those catastrophes. We cannot control disasters. All we can do is to solve them and try our best to not letting it happen. For example, you say UNOSA could do it, right? So if, even if it took care, why won't those collisions will still happen? So what do you think of that? And also I have a question for you. So you- Let me you answer that. that. Oh, okay. Please, what? please, let me answer that. You're saying that we can't ask a king about earthquakes. Yeah, you're right right there, but you can't compare that to space debris. If I, for example, am responsible for space debris and something happens because of space debris, then it's my fault. It's not the world's fault. It's my fault because I haven't taken care of space debris. Now, I would like to answer the other question as well. Thank you. Uh, so like, I would just like to answer that. I think the bigger question that is uh, needed to be asked is basically um, preventing weapons of mass destruction from reaching outer space. See, we agree, debris cause issues, but those are minor issues compared to what would be the catastrophes if nuclear weapons would be sent into outer space, you know? And UNSC is the only organization on the planet that can potentially stop uh, weapons of mass destruction and nuclear weapons from reaching outer space. Okay, so first of all, if the ISS gets destroyed, it's a minor thing. That's what you said. Second of all, you okay. think... That is not what we said. We said you think, relatively. You think that the UN Security Council is the one that verifies everything before it's sent to space so that it's not a weapon, okay? But then why does Lebanon not, uh, not hear those regulations and why does it violate them every year? So the UN Security Council is not the one, is not the best one. And you have already proved that by saying that they don't make their job with space debris. It is mainly about the technology and science, and you're all blaming for the authority that is taking care of it. It is about the science and technology and how- Sorry, debaters, the time is about to end. Please conclude your ideas. Okay. I so think it's... the issue of Lebanon is completely different from space traffic management. You see, space traffic management is something completely different and not related to the issue going on with Lebanon and not obeying UNSC. I think UNSC is the best organization. So like, what can Yenosa even do if a country, say Iran, decides to send nuclear weapons into our space? What can, what power or what say does Yenosa even have to potentially stop it? How so can the best uh, the time up. If someone up, Sorry. Sorry. So, okay. okay. So now let's hear from Afirma T3 from Team Satishta 1 for your remaining arguments for three minutes. Please start. Okay. Based on what was mentioned by my teammates and in order to reinforce our position on the subject, I would like to highlight uh, the fact that creating safe environments and involving environment beyond air will be an important moment in the history of man making. Above all the fact that we can create a new community, then we will apply knowledge from the history of humanity, where it is known that the rules are those that govern no countries or on earth and must be respected by all without distinction. First of all, I would like to say that space is a dangerous place, not only because of the debris, but also because of the greed of people who could start a war beyond Earth. The UN being the most powerful link between people on Earth is the best path to universalization, a state in which we are all united and working to improve humanity to become an interplanetary race. The purpose of the United Nations is to maintain international peace and security as an international recognized organization. The United Nations has the obligation and needs to ensure order and around the earth. As we all know, development cannot continue without order. With the development of the aerospace industry, there are more and more aircraft in space. At this time, there must be a strong law recognized by all to ensure the order of traffic in space. The UN Security Council is made up of several powerful countries whose capabilities are recognized throughout the world. Now, in space management, I think the best option is to have rules established by the UN Security Council. Therefore, space traffic management should be regulated by the UN Security Council. 
Here are some examples of how the UN Security Council solved international problems. On August 7, 1963, the Security Council voted to impose a voluntary arms embargo on South Africa. On March 4, 1964, the Security Council approved the dispatch of peacekeeping force to Cyprus. On December 16, 1966, the Security Council imposed mandatory sanctions on Rhodesia, that now is Zimbabwe. On November 4, 1977, the Security Council approved the mandatory arms embargo against South Africa. Imagine a world which a rogue nation star war outside of Earth atmosphere. History has taught us that in the case of World War II, that human agreed can destroy life and futures. That is why we believe that the UN Security Council is the only proper council to govern space traffic. It has the authority to manage trafficking uh, so that there is no violence beyond Earth. Thank you. No, sorry. And the destruction caused by the war will also increase the number of debris around our Earth, making the space traffic even more complicated than it already is. Collision will occur more frequently, and that will cause a chaos. Same. Okay, thank you. We have a one minute talent break at this time. Time's up, we continue. Negative three from Tina Kentura, please give your remaining arguments and response to affirmative three in your six minutes allotment. Start, please. Hello, everybody. My name is Maria Chupal, and today I'm going to be the third speaker of Team Alantara, and I will bring the second argument, why we think that the UN Security Council should not regulate space traffic management and what alternative approach we propose. According to the first argument brought, we have already shown why we don't think that the UN Security Council should be responsible for the space traffic management regulation. First of all, I will bring some information regarding our proposal for the STM regulation and why we think it is appropriate and make a comparison between our idea and the UN Security Council. We propose NATO to regulate space traffic management. According to NATO.int, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, it is made out of 30 countries, while the UN Security Council only out of 50. More countries means more and better collaboration, which can be further direct this power. Isn't this what universalization means? Collaboration and respect between multiple countries and going to space as humankind, not as countries. This is one of the reasons why we think that NATO should regulate space traffic management. Another argument is that NATO has already developed a space policy. At the 2018 Brazil summit, NATO leaders recognized that space is a highly dynamic and rapidly evolving area, which is essential for alien security and agreed to develop an overarching NATO space policy. More than that, at the June 2019 Defense Minister meeting, Ellis adopted NATO's space policy. At the 2019 in December leaders meeting in London, Ellis declared space a fifth operational domain alongside air, land, sea, and cyberspace. In their declaration, NATO leaders stated, we have declared space an operational domain for NATO, recognizing it's important in keeping us safe and talking security challenges while upholding international law. This is why on 22nd of October, 2020, defense minister decided to establish NATO space center at Allied Air Command in Ramstein. 
NATO already has a lot of experience in cybersecurity domain. Since 2006, NATO has been running operational cyber defense capabilities and has established a good model in deployment and operating of cyber defense technologies and capabilities, says Salman Anil, head of cyber defense at NATO. Governments alone would not be able to respond to cyber threats. New and innovative cyber technologies are developed by the private sector. Sharing information and logic and knowledge can and should be import, improved in this area, and NATO is doing its part. This happened in 2011. Things had improved a lot since then, and NATO got better cybersecurity concept. Now you can ask, okay, but what is the connection between cybersecurity and space traffic management? Well, as my colleague Daniela defined, STM does not only refer to space mission and launches, but also to the purpose of the missions. There are over 2,500 satellites in the LEO. But besides that, they also exist satellites known as spy satellites, which have malicious purposes. Shouldn't there be regulation against this? Cybersecurity is responsible for interfering with the purpose of what these satellites do. If NATO already has knowledge about cybersecurity, why shouldn't we let them do their job? This is something respectful, not only for the environment, but also for humankind, also known as universalization, as it could help for collaboration between countries. This is why we think that there is someone better than the UN Security Council who should regulate space traffic management. This is NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This was the second argument through which we exemplified why we think that it's best for the UN Security Council not to regulate space traffic management. And now the rebuttals for the other team. You talked about space agencies and how the humanity can come together. In the UN Security Council, one member of one country represents the whole country, right? But what happens with the private space agencies? The FAA already established a good collaboration between private space agencies. Take the example of SpaceX and Starlink satellites. What happened in this case of UN Security Council regarding space traffic management? Then our second approach, according to Simonette Di Pipo, director of UNOSA, UNOSA is partnering up with Sierra Space, a private space agency, to offer United Nations member state the opportunity to participate in an orbital space mission utilizing Sierra's space dream chaser, space event. UNOSA can simply ask SpaceX to their table to say their opinion. You talked about World War II, right? You give us example of achievement that of UN Security Council here on Earth, but what is the connection between them and the ones that happen in space? In, 2000, in 1962, NATO was supporting the UN, uh, United States. Don't forget that. Next, Andre will tell you the debate summary after the affirmative team's response and the crosses. Thank you. Thank you. We have a one minute silent break at this time. We continue. Affirmative three of Sachita one now returns for response three minutes to negative three. Start, please. Okay. First of all, why hasn't a World War III broken out? UN Security Council with its veto ensure that people with enough power to cause destructive chaos are kept in check. Let's admit it. No country will want to bow down to achieve universalization. We have a staff dedicated to restore power balance and not to push any powerful country to take a drastic step. And should a universalization include their interests as well as we consider the rest of the world? Of course, there are, no, there are problems, but what the openness proposed won't work either. 
how great is the probability that an organization will be created that where all countries without distinction will be given the opportunity to participate? In itself, we know that it is already very difficult for countries to agree, and others are not trained or do not have the necessary technology to know about the space that's around us. For this reason, we emphasize that the UN Security Council is the best option for lead this project that in the end will bring benefits to all countries in the world. Now, you're highlighting the fact that we should not give absolute control to a single country, but if we put ourselves in context by working as a group, is there not always a leader who can provide us with solution? Exactly. And what is because and that's because he knows the subject and at hand and has experience like the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. By having them leading, we are not giving them all the power and much less we are giving them the freedom to change the rules to their benefit, since they are the non-permanent members. Could they can also comment on the issue and provide their point of view. The countries that are not yet so familiar with the subject of the face, we will be able to continue learning about it and develop themselves in order that developing countries strengthen their capacity regarding the use of face technology. Apart from that, as previously mentioned, we reaffirm that the UN Security Council is very well prepared because they have resolved various conflicts, such as those previously mentioned, making use of their power in order to achieve peace. How do you hope that an organization mentioned by you with a shift or have the power to resolve conflict of such magnitude in an area that we still do not know in its entirety, which is in the case of the space, where it currently needs it to make sure that no country wants to attack the others and everyone stays on the sidelines so that the permanent country will continue to support the non permanent country to be part of the UN Security Council and will be able to learn various things that will help them get there. To understand how to develop to finally be able to, the, to function in a space like any other country, we consider this type of learning to be more direct and more beneficial of the countries involved. And they're in, in the full development. In turn, it will ensure that each of these countries is good career related to space in their countries, such as astronomy, which is currently not taking into account in various countries. That's the way we reach universalization which means guarantee everyone free access to a certain service in a peaceful way. Okay, thank you. Let's now hear affirmative three and four and negative three and four in the second four minute cross-examination. I can interrupt the negative position will begin this cross-examination. Start please. Okay, so you talked about technology and that the UN Security Council has experience in that, but NATO and UNOSA has two and much more. Can you please give me an example of experience that the UN Security Council has related to the technology in outer space? I will ask, I uh, will have the pleasure to ask uh, the question to the third speaker. Should I ask another question? Okay, no. Um, I'm going to answer you. Uh, first of all, uh, we consider that the UN Security Council is actually not in charge of um, anything related with the space. They are in charge of the security of the yeah. people in, on Earth, because that's actually what we are talking about, that it's the humanity. But we are moving them to the space because that's what we want in the future. That's why we consider them as a good solution. And also the countries that are in the UN Security Council know a lot about the space. They can make more rules and give the information to the countries that are not permanent. But you haven't asked, answered my question. Have, do you know of some examples? She what has answered the question. She said that they have not experienced in space. So how can you say no. that then that the UN Security Council should regulate space traffic management if they don't? That's exactly our point. Because we are, we are saying that the UN Security Council should take about should uh, regulate better like uh, global warming, global pollution, this kind of stuff, not space traffic management. So, what are the most random? What do you think about that? Let me answer that. So okay. the UNSC, uh, the five permanent members, are the ones that have the most powerful uh, space programs. So they have the knowledge uh, to start. Uh, regulating STM. NATO doesn't have the budget and the knowledge about space technology. 
Can you give me some numbers about the budget? I assure you that they have way more than that. And we have proven it through cybersecurity and this kind of stuff. You said that the Security Council already has experience with the World War II. Well, how does World War II depend? So how does, what is the connection between World War II and space traffic management? That is the second question. I would like uh, speaker three to answer that as well, please. And what about to control like the security? Because if you are talking about the debris in the space, you first need to control all the countries. What about NATO? They have the power to do that. I don't think so. Uh, yes, they have. And I'm going to cite you one thing uh, that Mariah also cited. For example, uh, one moment, please. In 1962, NATO was supporting the United States and the Soviet army launched missiles, missiles to Cuba. NATO has protected Cuba. Besides that, they can simply ask SpaceX or any other private agency to come to table and express their point. The same with UNOSA. So how do you relate on that? Well, for example, the USA has a connection with the SpaceX, right? So uh, each country has uh, connections with each its own um, space programs, individual okay. space programs. Okay, but then what about ESA? Or uh, besides ESA, what about Sierra Space? That uh, is, so the director of UNOSA, Simonetta Di Popo, the people talked about Sierra Space and that, and that they have already a very good collaboration between them. So okay. it's Let not just about space. Uh, the UN Security Council regulate rocket launches also. Um, all the things when, that they when, do are when. in favor of the universalization. NATO is only, they do things to benefit their own self because all the countries that are about them, they are from North America and Europe. What about South America? They don't have any importance in this. I have a question. Like that. Give me an example of a, of a rocket that they have regulated, of, of a launch of a rocket. What are we talking about? That's what I'm saying. You said about about to end. Please conclude your ideas. You said about the budget, but did you know that you know just received in 2021 10 million dollars in order to fulfill his program pilot program? And besides that, UNC, UNSC has uh, spent 80 billion dollars on climate change. So I think that the budgets aren't quite as you say. Thank Sorry, you. debaters, the time's up. So uh, now we have a two-minute silent break. Time's up, we continue. 
Affirmative four from Team Satish Dawan will begin the summary in the four minutes allotment. Start, please. We have been talking about all the important parts that have to be taken into consideration when considering who should regulate space traffic management. This decision isn't easy. That is why we have researched reasons and arguments that the UN Security Council should be the one having the honor of looking after the safety of people in space, going towards space and people returning from space. Now I'll tell you how each of us contributed to decide's arguments. Speaker one has introduced us to the concept and has explained to us how the UNSC would operate so that safety and peace would be ensured beyond Earth. Speaker 2 has told us about the danger of debris surrounding Earth's atmosphere. We have learned about the trash that has been left behind the UNSC's permanent members so that we can, so that we can understand that they already have a responsibility because of the debris they have left behind, most probably unintentionally. Speaker 2 has shown us that the UNSC, being a committee formed by five of the most powerful countries on Earth, has the authority and strength to maintain the peace beyond Earth and keep everyone safe. Speaker 3 has talked about the fact that the UNSC is the most powerful link between people on Earth. It is a path towards universalization. It has the power to unite people on Earth, to take advantage of the mysteries of space and work together to improve humanity. We have also learned about the UNSC's power to keep arms traffic in line so that there wouldn't be violence beyond Earth. As most probably know, most, more than 80% of all debris on Earth's low atmosphere was created by the five permanent members of the UNSC, which tells us that they also have a moral obligation to prevent accidents because of those. We accept that the UNSC isn't perfect, but UNOOSA would do all the great work and come up with regulations, and UNSC should make the final decision. Universalization would be in our favor on UNOSA is involved. UNSC is best at handling political conflicts. When humanity is trying to move into the next frontier, not final, we need our experienced leaders at front. UNSC has the military power to keep space a peaceful place. Let's imagine a hypothetical situation in which our country goes rogue and starts taking over space. Does NATO have the power to put it in its place? I don't think so. And let's not even talk about UNOSA. Now I'd like to invite some of my colleagues to join. Yeah, thanks, Eddie, for the arguments. So let me make one thing clear. The negative team has spoken about FAA and NATO, but those two organizations fundamentally go against the principle of universalization, which tells us to promote cooperation and take into account every single country's views, opinions, and ideas. FAA is considering only the United States of America, not the entire world. We need UNSC to preserve the idea and the principle of universalization. And that is one of the major reasons why UNSC has to regulate space traffic. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, negative four delivers their counter summary in the four minutes allotment. Start, please. Okay, so hello again, everybody. Now I'm going to conclude the debate through the final statement with the help of my colleagues, Daniela and Mariah. I will conclude one more time with what arguments my team has brought and after that, the other team cases. Then we will compare them and demonstrate to you one more time why we think that the STM shouldn't be regulated by the UN Security Council. So Daniela, could you say something about the definition of the terms and both teams perspective about the resolution? Yes. Well, the definition of terms by the other team was quite alike to ours, and we think the perspective um, of the resolution was the correct one. Hmm. Thank you, Rez Thank you, Daniela. So now I'll summarize the first broad argument. I've talked about the different reasons we think that UN Security Council shouldn't definitely regulate STM. First, countries violate UN Security Council regulations and no one says something about it, thus destroying the concept of universalization. Second, UN Security Council already invested a lot of money in climate action, being concerned about global warming and pollution. Third, the UN Security Council has little to none aspects in common with STM, and the affirmative team just approved that. Fourth, we have showed you why you know say substantially better for this job. Next, Moriah, could you please tell us a few words about your argument? Yes, I will highlight the main points from my speech. 
First, NATO is made out of more countries than the UN Security Council, meaning there's more collaboration between countries, more exactly universalization. Second, NATO has already developed a space policy. And third, NATO has experience in cybersecurity, which is very important in order to prevent satellites for malicious purposes. Thank you. Thank you, Mariah. Okay, so in the end, we think that the affirmative team had very well worked cases, but we think that they had mistakes in their arguments, which, which we have talked about in the cross -ex. The clashes in the fight were presented by how the UN Security Council doesn't take care of space debris, and the main problem of Lebanon, with which they don't agree. How can the UN Security Council regulate space if there already is a country who violates the regulations? And third, the budgets, which have been clearly shown by us with existing evidence. We think that the cross sex really helped, and uh, we can draw the following conclusions out of them. We have proposed two better approaches for STM regulations, that, that better than the UN Security Council. So to make things one more time clear, we propose UNOSA, which is the Department of the United Nations for Space Affairs, and NATO, the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, to regulate STM. And we have clearly shown why they are way better than the UN Security Council. Speaker 4 said that uh, the UN Security Council has the five most powerful countries that develop the best space policies. But those countries are also in UNOSA. So we can really say that UNOSA is way better. Besides that, where is more collaboration to achieve universalization? In 15 or in 30 or 95 countries? Um, besides that, we can also talk about the technologies in uh, space experience. There is a platform that in 2010, UNOSA part of uh, UNOSA uh, launched the Human Space Technology Initiative, which provides an exchange of information activities related to space exploration to encourage collaboration between countries. So, according to the United Nations website, this initiative is part of an effort to of enable access to space education, data technology and research, creating access to space for all. So, I don't really get it. How are we not achieving universalization through this as well? What we're trying to say is that UNOSA, so basically Speaker 4 said when he invited Speaker 3 that UN Security Council should just give the final word of, of what UNOSA does. What does regulating mean? It means to write the rules. So UN Security Council should write the rules? I don't get it. If you know that does makes all the work, why should you, the UN Security Council do it? So only write the rules. It doesn't make sense. So this was Tim Alantara and time is up. So thank you for this amazing opportunity. Thank you debaters. The judges now adjourn to the breakout room for their deliberation. They may have five minutes, but we encourage you to return as soon as you can to the main room. Okay, I'm going to open the room right now and put both judges in. Okay, so uh, while we're waiting for the judges to come back to the main room, I request everyone to turn on your videos and mics, please. Okay, thank you. So I would like to talk with you a little bit and ask you some questions. Uh, first of all, uh, we know that this year's resolution is space traffic management should be regulated by the United Nations Security Council. So my question is, in the month leading up to the resolution announcement, what was your understanding of space debris? I mean, what was your understanding of space debris before you did all the research for the debate already? So who wants to answer this question? Any team member can answer the question. Anyone? Um, what about uh, Daniela? Uh, Sharon. Um, I, I'm wondering if you could maybe rephrase your question. Uh, are you asking um, if if the knowledge about the knowledge that students had yes. or the view that they had before the, they entered this debate versus um, after? Yes, yeah, the idea, the concept that they have about uh, the space uh, debris before uh, the research that you did already for the debate. I can answer that if everyone's okay. So. Basically, before the debate, I didn't know so much about space debris because I so nothing made me want to Google that. 
and yeah, read information about that. And uh, besides that, I was really surprised how things really are because as I already said, and this has nothing to do with the debate, uh, space debris is really a problem because just one week ago, the, S the ISS was hit by it. So we should definitely do something about that, which I did now, I did not know before starting preparing for this debate. Okay, thank you. Um, anyone else wants to answer this yeah, question? So like, I had the vague idea of what space debris actually is before entering this debate, before starting to research upon the topic. But then once I started researching about it, I just came to know more and more, and I just understood the importance and the dangerous situation that we are currently in. We, uh, the space race hasn't even started yet, and there's a lot of space debris in outer space. And the accumulation of more space debris is just going to create more problems in the future if it's not resolved at the earliest. So, yeah. Okay, thank you for your answer. Um, anyone else wants to add something? I don't want to add anything, but I, I just want to say that this time I agree with him as well. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I don't know, anyone else? wants to answer this question. Um, what about Annie from Team Satista One? Okay, well, actually at first, uh, I know what uh, space debris is. It's just, I thought it was just like trash in the space. But then like after this, I know that how it is so harmful to us and why the like, the UNSC or FAA is always arguing about how to handle space debris problems. At first, I thought they were just like like um, the plastic bottles on Earth or something. I don't know what harm can they cause. And then uh, after this debate, uh, debate, I know it could be really big or like even if they're really small, it could like crash on Earth and destroy like a huge object. Thank you. It was really interesting to hear you. Um, I don't know, uh, Maria from Tina Cantora, what about you? Yes, I didn't thought that uh, space debris was such an important problem that we need to solve. But after research, it just demonstrated, uh, it's more research I did, it just dem demonstrated me that we need to solve the problem and someone needs to regulate it uh, more properly. Thank you. Um, what about you, Daniela? Well, um, first of all, can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Well, before this debate, I didn't even know what was a space debris. Um, and now I, I know the importance that is to solve this problem, you know? Uh, space debris also known like as, as space junk, space pollution, is very important. So all this thanks to this debate. <laughs> I'd like to ask uh, Daniela a question further on that. Daniela, uh, you come from Peru, is that right? I'm sorry, can, can you repeat? You come, you come from Peru, is that right? Yeah, I'm from Peru, also so like Stephanie. From, okay, uh, I'm sorry. Um, and uh, from your perspective, uh, you know, they've talked about the world and, and the debris there. Uh, Peru does not have a very strong space uh, presence at this time. So um, what is your feeling in terms of your uh, representation um, about the safety uh, and security of um, Peruvians regarding space debris? Well, okay, well, um, well, that what you said is right. In Peru, we don't we don't talk too much about these topics. So the introduction of these topics in students, for example, I I think that is really important because it's a topic that is related to our space, that is part of our universe, of our world, you know. So in and now in relation of space debris, um, I think that is a is a problem that concerns of all of us, you know. So knowing these these topics, these these terms, I think that we can be more emphatic with, with our universe, and also a search for for solutions to to this problem like space debris. 
Thank you, Stephanie. Do you have anything to add? I believe you are all uh, also Peruvian. Is that right? Yeah, I also think that we don't talk too much about the Greece or in space in or in the schools or in our with a lot of people that always encourage us to work or um, study any career. They always talking us to study the common one, and they didn't talk much about space. But a few years ago, there was like uh, a program where they teach us about different careers, like engineering, space programs, and that kind of stuff. But the main problem is that here, we don't have like a university that give us the opportunity to study any career related with space. Like I said in my speech, we can study uh, astronomy here because we don't have the career here. We need to travel to another place. That's the problem. Very interesting, thank you. Okay, um, thank you debaters for your answers. It was really interesting to hear you, but now I think that the judges are here in the main room already. So we must continue with the debate. So judges, we're excited to hear the results. Please give the teams your feedback and announce the winners. We have five minutes. Um, who wants to start giving the feedback to the teams judges? I can do it. Um, okay. So to both teams, great debate. Um, I thought there were some good arguments that were being explained by both sides. Um, I think when we were discussing as judges, we specifically liked how kind of uh, the private sector was brought up and kind of discussed it in how the private sector's impact will be will, will, will have on space exploration and space debris. Um, I also thought that uh, the cross-sex in this debate was phenomenal. It was a lot of good questions and kind of, you know, back and forth, um, just kind of trying to dig into some of the things that were kind of wanting to be cleared up. Um, but uh, when we kind of looked at the arguments and we evaluated, I think uh, we kind of erred on, on the, the negative side. We looked at kind of the arguments about how the, the uh, organizations like NATO or UNOSA could maybe fulfill some of the similar roles that uh, the Security Council could fill, but also include some more, more countries and that would more um, you know, easily get globalization to occur um, and universalization to occur, sorry, because more countries are involved and more countries are accounted for. Um, I'll pass to my other judge if they have any other comments, but uh, that's kind of how we decided. Yeah, so same here. Uh, we're for the for the negative team. Um, I I am just really blown away by how you guys have debated. Again, that cross examination was awesome. There was a lot of passion, a lot of energy, and I felt it 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 was awesome. I was just like, wow, this you guys are great. <laughs> um, I love your use of statistics um, and also how insightful you are with um, other things just outside of it, you know, uh, the whole situation, like how we can't control disasters and, you know, sort of a, a, a psychological aspect to it and, and that kind of stuff. Uh, also, again, also that there's a private sector that's not a part of government and, and that's, that's true. And I was just like, wow, um, how we, how we can get all together um, to be able to get these, uh, get these laws in place so we can have better space traffic management. Um, I, yeah, I, I think bringing up the idea that other, other groups could possibly do a better job, that was, that was very good. And also, again, very insightful. Um, overall, I think you guys are all amazing, good communicators. I love the tonation, the contact. Um, I think you both listen to each other very well. So great job, you guys. Okay. So thank you, judges, for your feedback. We really appreciate it. And congratulations for both of the teams. Uh, let's have a round of applause for everyone because you did a really great job. So congratulations again. And uh, thank you for participating in the 2021 Spawn Debate Tournament for Room 15. The debate for one would not be possible without students, debaters, coaches, hosts, and moderators. Many thanks. And students and coaches, please consult the tournament bracket for your next room. Your coaches will provide you with your next debate position as soon as possible. Judges, please remain in the Zoom room for reporting purposes. Goodbye, everyone.
I'm going to stop the recording now.